Hello guys, welcome back. Let's talk about Glock 26, the baby Glock. A Glock that debuted in 1995, but is still as relevant as ever. It was originally designed to compete with small frame snub nose revolvers, but over the years has made a market of its own. Smith & Wesson Airwhite and Ruger SP-101 fans might not like it, but Glock 26 offers several advantages over those snubbies. The first of them has to be the magazine capacity. And I don't have to say it out loud that five or six rounds stand no chance against 10 plus rounds capacity. Some might argue that firepower is not a substitute for tactics, but the nine millimeter round is about as good as it gets. Plus, the option of more rounds never hurts. Furthermore, Glock 26 also offers faster reloads and flatter profile, making it one of the best concealed carry on the market. The gun also does not compromise in practicality and is as accurate as you can get in subcompact handguns. However, these are the things that you might already be familiar with, or at least have heard about. You clicked on this video to learn about the baby Glock in depth, and I'll try not to disappoint. I had owned this gun for over two decades, long before I started this channel, and I have probably fired thousands of rounds so far. It is definitely not my daily driver, but I try my hands at it every now and then just to have fun. Do not get me wrong, this gun is quite capable, but thanks to you guys, I have far more sophisticated toys to play with. So, without wasting one more second, let's just get to the actual video. These are the things I noticed in Glock 26 after about two decades of experience with it. A bit of background. Before going into details of the baby Glock, it is important to understand the thought process and engineering that led to the creation of Glock 26. Right now, the Glock 26 is recognized for its uniqueness, but not many know that it is a modified variant of the Glock 19. Well, okay, maybe most gun enthusiasts might have known this, but it was important to mention for those who are new to the gun market. Glock re-engineered the Glock 19, which included lightening weight and shrinking frame size to produce a baby Glock. As evident from its design, the Glock 26 was a niche design that targeted people seeking a capable concealed carry. Glock 26 fits the bill for anyone looking for a subcompact but capable gun. It shared the heritage of the Glock 17 and the Glock 19, which is why you notice some similarities in the designs of the three guns. People who understand guns know that while designing a subcompact gun, some compromises must be made. You cannot have all the features of a substandard handgun in a subcompact pistol. It is just not possible. But the important thing is where those compromises are made, which is what defines whether the gun is capable. Fortunately, Glock's compromises were the right ones and delivered a decent subcompact handgun. One of the huge concerns with subcompact handguns is reliability and functionality, but Glock checks all the right boxes. While the Glock 26 shares the looks of the Glock 17 and the Glock 19, it is almost entirely a newly designed handgun. Everything from the frame to spring assemblies, including the dual recoil spring mechanism, was redesigned. These design changes have proved crucial in making the baby Glock as capable as it is. It is the type of gun you can put in your pocket in the morning and rest assured that should a situation arise, you will not have to experience any disappointment. Some other features that I love about Glock 26 include Concealability If you are looking for a subcompact gun, concealability is probably your first priority or else you would be looking in a completely different category. Well, Glock 26 certainly does not let you down as far as concealability is concerned. It is a true subcompact pistol that fits nicely both outside and inside the waistband. And to be honest, once you have holstered it in, you would barely even notice it, thanks to its lightweight. I have heard some people complain about the width of the frame, but frankly, I have never had an issue with it. Glock maintained the width to make it compatible with the Glock 17 and the Glock 19 magazines, which enable double stack magazine configuration. As per some people, it adds a bit of bulk, which might be the case, but I, for one, have never had trouble with it. And even if I did, I would be happy to make the compromise. Ergonomics. At this point, I do not have to say that with all subcompact guns, ergonomics is going to be the one thing you will have to compromise. 
Like most handguns, you would not have enough grip space to rest your little fingers. But hey, it is something that you already know and are probably willing to compromise on. However, I must mention that Glock 26 grip feels more comfortable than some other concealed carry on the market. Plus, whether you get a standard gun or a subcompact one, you will not develop that muscle memory until you train with it. If you want to use it as a daily driver, spend some time at the range with the Glock 26 and familiarize yourself with it. I'm sure whatever reservations you have about the ergonomics will fade away. The difference is quite noticeable for me because I do not use it as a daily driver, but for someone who wants to use the Glock 26 as a primary weapon, the grip issue would not even matter because it is what your body will be trained for. Accuracy. When looking for a subcompact gun, accuracy should be the biggest concern. You are not getting this gun to have fun at a range. There are good other options. The purpose of such guns is to target dead centers should a situation arise. And if a handgun cannot do that, there is no use for that. Fortunately, the Glock 26 does not let you down in terms of accuracy. Anyone with basic skills can easily hit the target at 14-15 yards. Furthermore, Glock has improved barrels in the 5th generation. What is known as the Marksman Barrel is significantly more accurate than previous models. If you have followed the channel long enough, you would know that I am not a fan of Glock's plastic sights. But luckily, there are plenty of aftermarket options which does not make it a deal breaker for me. I have customized mine with AmeriGlow Pro iDot and they do a decent enough job for me. You can also find suitable options from the loads of variety on the market. Safety. Regarding safety, there are typically two options. One, carry a double action only pistol, and second, carry a single action only gun with a manual safety. Another option is carrying a handgun with an empty chamber, but let's not go there. I mean, it is better not to carry a gun altogether than to chamber it when a situation arises. The Glock 26 features the Glock Safe Action Trigger System, and I am not a fan of it. It certainly is not manual safety, but I have to say that it is safer than pure single action only handguns. The trigger pull is not short or sensitive for my liking, but it is far better than a double action only handgun. Furthermore, safety on the trigger also produces a bit of a spongy feel despite its 3.5 pound connector. And if you compare it with other well-tuned single action triggers like that of M1911, it certainly feels subpar. In a nutshell, the Glock 26 checks mainly the right boxes when it comes to being a capable subcompact handgun. It is not an ideal handgun, but it is not what it tries to be anyway. The gun carries a niche market, and I think the Glock has done a pretty decent job at it. You can carry the gun without even feeling it and be confident that should the time come, Glock 26 will not disappoint. For me, the compromises are well within my comfort zone. But it might not be the case for everyone, especially those who want to use it as a daily driver. Some other good options in the subcompact market are Hellcat and TP9 subcompact. But again, those handguns have their own drawbacks. The point is, you will have to make some compromises in this market. Now it is up to you to decide what compromises you want to make. That is all for this video. I hope it was fun and entertaining. Let me know in the comment section what you think of my insights into the Glock 26. Stay connected with the channel to learn more about handguns and everything else surrounding them. As always, I will see you at the next one.